Are you part of a nonprofit organization, a youth group looking to raise cash for your cause? Stay tuned at the end of this video to learn how you can bring the action and excitement of the Millennium Wrestling Federation to your town live, featuring the superstars and legends of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. on your mind but I already know you want to know what has got my beard looking oh so majestic and I'll tell you it's sexy as hell beard care coconut oil vitamin E oil almond oil both sweet and bitter shea butter it's all natural yes JTG has actually come out with a high quality product so support your boy by going to sahbeardcare.com and take one step closer to becoming sexy as hell <laughs> Cheer. <laughs> Ooh, cheer. <laughs> you know? San Antonio. This Tuesday, July 2nd, WWE SmackDown Live returns to the double main event. You could never beat me. Kingston's not going to back down. As Kofi Kingston takes on Dolph Ziggler for the WWE Championship. And elbow drop! Bailey clashes with Charlotte Flair for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Plus, Randy Orton. It's WWE SmackDown Live this Tuesday, July 2nd. Tickets are available now. This is Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Lorndorf. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL, and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world. Welcome to another installment of Wrestling Insiders. I'm Dan Marotti along with Mr. USA 2006 WWE Hall of Famer Tony, Mr. USA Atlas. And who is this John Cena senior prodigy? Matt Degnan. And what are you going to add to the conversation today? Some new age stuff. I'm the youngest one here. So. A new age point of view. A new age point of view. You remind me of me in 1999 when I was your age working for the Boston bad boy Tony Rumble. And I wasn't even alive in that year. Well, it's all right. I, I'm a young spirit. You can't make me feel old. All right, Tony. Again, I wasn't expecting to even do this episode. It is kind of a somber episode. And sometimes we have to hit the serious ones. I realized in doing my preparation for these shows that this is the anniversary week the 12th anniversary week of the murder of the Benoit family. And I don't think we've ever touched upon that. That is certainly one of the biggest incidents in the history of our genre. Um, for fans that are unfamiliar with it, from June 22nd to 24th in 2007, uh, Chris Benoit first murdered his wife. Uh, he put his son, apparently drugged him, and put him in a crippled cross face and broke his neck. And then he put Bibles around them, and on the Sunday... He hung himself in a weight room and killed himself, sending out some text messages. And I want to really kind of go into this one with some of the details, Tony. But just simply, uh, what was your initial reaction when you heard this crazy, horrible story? I can remember everything about it so vividly. None of us believe it. Not, n none of the rest of believe it. I, I don't believe it. You don't believe it? No. Why? Well... A lot of time, wrestlers get involved 
with people, mm -hmm. with things. Uh, sometimes that stuff backfire on them. Sometimes it, it, it don't. Sometimes people are able to do something. It is hard to believe that he could have hung himself. Why is that unbelievable? It, it was the way, it, it, the way that they show it on the television and uh, 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 everything. And he, and he loved this boy uh, uh, so much. And the reason that, 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 that they never found, a, like most policemen, I talked to a lot of policemen, they got to be a motive. He, he had, no, he had no, no, no motive to do that. A lot of people, a lot of rats believe that he got some involved with somebody. Like the truth may come out, like for many, many years, we thought that Oswell shot Kennedy. Mm -hmm. I mean, the guy that's supposed to shot Martin Luther King went, went to the electric chair, said that he didn't do it, that he was set up, that he was the, the fall guy for it. So we normally find out things years later, but with most of these incidents, sometimes they close the book on it too soon. Well, I tell you, there's a lot and, of interesting bullet points and, and, we're going to go through. And, yeah, and, yeah, and I, don't think, I don't think that the police were really, really looked into it as much and they did, and the reason I, I believe that they didn't look into it as much as they did, because they were more concerned about protecting uh, McMahon company more so the, than they were in investigating the case. Because we all know very little about it. I mean, one of like well, we're going to go through with what we do know. It is one of the more interesting. Even yeah. if you, even if you're not a but, wrestling fan, but they it's a very all, interesting they case. They counted all as a suicide right off the bat. Yeah. I mean, they didn't put. It wasn't. They didn't put. I mean, they came to the conclusion much too soon to make me believe that that is what actually uh, uh, happened. And, and, I, and I talked to him uh, uh, right, right up here. That, you know, nobody seen nothing wrong with this kid. And I can't see him the way he loved that little boy to take an innocent life as a Christian. Because that's something he would burn in hell for. He, if, he, if he believed in the Bible, there's no way he could take the life of a child and see the kingdom of heaven. It, it don't work that way. And, and then an innocent woman, too. And the innocent. He killed innocents. He didn't kill some big rugged guy that a, a murder. He killed two innocent people, an innocent woman and an innocent child, and a child that was born in a way that was a little less fortunate than, than up. His kid had Down syndrome, you know? Well, I don't know if I'd say he had Down syndrome. He there, there, not, there are varied reports on what right, ailment yeah. he may have had. He, he had some ailment, but... I but, had seen him at WrestleMania 20 weekend in yeah. 2004. Innocence. I wouldn't have thought that there was some kind of a, a special need with the yeah. kid. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know enough about it. But he loved his kid. He loved his kid. I think he just got involved. You know, he was involved a lot with the, with the steroids and stuff like that. Yeah. Talk about old buddy Checking there. your wallet? I mean, your watch? No, I'm, I'm, check? Oh, I'm, okay. I'm reading the these because I was too young to know the so details. So let me ask you this. Before we go in-depth with some of the... Tony right now mm -hmm. thinks that Benoit didn't do it. Right. As someone that's younger, I'm always interested in the younger point of view. What Have you heard about the Benoit thing over the years? Other than I, I knew the thing about um, he broke his son's neck and you know he tied her and then he killed himself. But some of these little details, like the text messages what notifying... Do don't, don't kayfabe, baby. we got to... You know, you know, we gotta we gotta make the dinner. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not gonna explain the whole thing. I'm just saying of, I don't know much about it. As I was, a younger I was person, seven at the time, so I wasn't. We were a wrestling fan. I stopped or started watching wrestling in 2008. The end okay. of it. So even even then, I was still young. You know, for my mother, or father to tell me what happened. Yeah. So I was just very young to understand what had happened. Um, some of my friends had told me what had happened when I was about like 10 or 11. Mm -hmm. So I was starting to get to that understanding of what all this meant, but I never really went into detail about it. Well, you're going you're gonna to get more than maybe you, you bargained yeah. for on this one, Tony. Let's you take the Jimmy Slooker incident. Yeah. It wasn't until when he was the close later on, he was in his 70s, before they Ready found out that the story that they've been listening to for the was past... Was bullshit. Yeah, yeah, it was not the true story. And, they, and you know, this came right at the end of his, uh, his life. God rest him, you know, he was a friend of mine. But for years, people... And like I told you the last we did a show, if I had kept my mouth shut about Bruiser Brody, y'all would have thought a wrestling fan did it. So there have been a lot of stuff that had happened in the business. Like you take like the Von Erichs and stuff. You know, Fan and the Truth came out yeah. about what happened to him. A lot of people say, well, they commit suicide. They all did this and all that. But we got involved, and I did too, but for a lot of people, especially when we got involved in the drug world, the guys were bringing us the dope to the, to the hotel room. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> we didn't know that this guy was one of the was a hitman for this group right. or a hitman for the Bloods or the Crips. We just or, wanted the gimmick. We didn't want to give it. We didn't never pay no attention of where it was coming from. So I remember one night uh, we was in Newark, New, uh, Newark, New Jersey. It used to be the uh, Ramada Inn that where all the boys used to stay at. And a guy came to Adrian Donna's. I was talking to Adrian Donna. The guy said, "said brother, somebody's gonna have to pay us, or we're gonna have to take care of him." We were talking about the sheik. Yeah. Cause the sheik figure, you're not a sheik yet. Oh, I know. Brother, <laughs> I, I give you, much. brother, I give you autographed picture of me with the bob of a backler. You give me gimmick. The guy give him the gimmick. Sheik give him the picture. The guy sitting there looking. Sheik, well, brother, you know that's three hundred dollars. <laughs> sheik said, sheik said, sheik said, I give you, I give you autograph. See you later, buddy. And not pay the guy. When the sheik did this five or six times, so they came to the Ramada one day. And I was sitting, we were sitting there in the bar. And they was looking for him. He was up in the room doing his gimmick card. The guy just gave him the gimmick. She didn't pay him. So she probably don't even remember that. So me and Adrian talked to the guy. So all the boys yeah, got... Adrian Adonis? Adrian Adonis. Okay. So, so me, Morocco, all those guys, we got together and, and gave the guy some money. So he brought some guys. They were going to do the sheik in. The sheik really? came that freaking close. Another time he took me to the place to get some gimmick from some Italian guys. And I went to use the bathroom. And there was a guy over behind in the corner of his coat, his, his throat cut. Really? Yeah, but You've she seen did, some interesting she, things. Well, he went to get these. The dog did me like that. Dog took me to a freaking place one day. Crack was, house. Yeah, crack yeah. house was an abandoned building, and we were in a freaking limousine. We were doing a TNT with you Vince, and Junkyard Dog. Me and Junkyard okay. Dog, and and the, the limit. The Vince, I, I was going to the airport, get ready to catch my flight. Vince said, "I want to make sure that dog get to St. Louis, Missouri tonight." So we're going to cancel your ticket, and you're going to ride on a private plane with dog. Private plane, he went for dog, cause dog had to do this this thing. Mm -hmm. So Vince wanted this thing done. So with the private plane take us there. There was a limousine waiting to pick me and dog up. Dog said, "Hey brother, I need to go to the hood to get myself something." So the guy, instead of go taking us straight to the building like he's supposed to, he went in the hood. Dog went into this building, and we walked in, and a guy sitting in the corner, no lights on nowhere, pitch black, pitch black. And all the, and all this, we hear this voice out of the doctors, and he would throw the thing over to you. Is that what you want? And dog said, oh, oh yeah, that's good shit, man. How much I owe you? The guy said, uh, here's the money. The guy said, just leave it there. Dog put the money on the floor. You and couldn't I'm even saying, see the person. No, really? no, he stayed in the dark. Never laid eyes on him. He, he threw dog the, the, the a, a, a bag of, of, of cocaine. How did he know what he wanted? Well, that's what he sold. Oh, that's that, all that, he, he had. Was a, okay. He was a he was a cocaine dealer. I haven't really done yeah, this. Yeah, dog, dog was in that cocaine. Not much background in <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah, you know, we, <laughs> I haven't had too much experience. Yeah, yeah. We we was out of question. So he got his cocaine and, and everything, and dog had to lay the money on the on the floor. Mm -hmm. And so then we walked out the door, and the guy stopped us before we got out the door. Another guy with gun, and, and what did the guy check the money, make sure it was for real? If the money was not for real, he was gonna shoot us. So I'm sitting there sweating freaking bullet. I was supposed to wrestle King Kong Bundy that night, and as I, when I got to the arena, Bundy was leaving the ring. George, uh, George, uh, what was his name? Wells. Oh, George Wells. George Wells took my took my spot that night. Dog made his match, but and I missed you mine. Got a lot of shit and, and I and I and Vince got mad at me before it because he said it was your responsibility to get JYD there. I said, I would. Why was it your responsibility to get JYD to the building? He was a grown man. Well, that's how Vince did it. He put me in, and he wanted, he figured that I could talk to Dog and get him there. But Dog was here, and I was here. You were on the undercut. Yeah, he wanted, wanted me to try to talk to him, just like when they wanted me with Mark Henry to try to get Mark Henry to eat salad instead of, <laughs> you know, instead of meatball sub, you know. I almost got my head knocked off trying to do that shit. Try to get him up out of bed in the morning and go to the gym. He ain't. He wasn't going to do that, you know. And they've always put me in the spot to try to get me to convince people, but they don't give me enough authority to do it. Right. See? You should have been an agent, maybe. If I was an agent, I probably could have got a lot more done with with uh, Mark, Mark Henry right there. But due to the fact that Mark and Mark Henry tell me every time that I would say something, well, you only here because of me. I go, well, maybe Mark Henry that. said that to you? Many times. Really? Many times. Wow. You're only here because That's of me. Stiff. He said, if I go to Vince and tell him I don't want you around, you won't be around. And it was true. Like John Cedar, he could go to Vince and say, look, I don't want this guy. Here you go. Undertaker oh, go to Vince. with Mickey yeah, James. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Undertaker go and say, I don't want this guy around. You're gone. You know, that's just how the, the cookie crumbled. You know? These are very interesting stories, yeah. Tony, but I know I get a lot of heat in the feedback sometimes. I got to try and reel you back in.
to the topic at hand, which is the Chris Benoit murder, even though... You know, it's all similarity. I think he was involved with something that... that right, well, let's break it down. Let's break it down. Friday, he murders Nancy. Saturday, he kills the baby. Sunday, he kills himself is the timeline that the police have reported. Uh, he no-showed a house show in Beaumont, Texas on the Saturday, and obviously the pay-per-view, and he was going to work CM Punk on the Sunday. Uh, he sent text messages to Chavo Guerrero on the Saturday saying that Nancy and the baby had food poisoning. Uh, this little strange... I don't want to go too deep into the conspiracies, because we know a lot of the people that are involved, Tony, but on the Sunday, he sent five text messages from his cell phone and Nancy's cell phone to Chavo Guerrero, Scott Armstrong, and three unknown people. Again, portraying this illness, the illness, food poisoning. Um, on the Monday, John Laurinaitis, WWE Talent Relations, learns of the text messages, and then they send the police to the home to find out that the bodies were there. And uh, strangely enough, the week before this all happened on Monday Night Raw, storyline-wise, Vince McMahon, I don't know if you remember this, Tony, blew himself up in a limousine and the Houston arena where Raw was going to be taking place the night they learned of the bodies was set up as a funeral for Vince McMahon. They had a talent meeting in the venue to tell the talent that the Benoit family was dead at that point. As legend is told, nobody knew in WWE what had really happened, even though there were these unaccounted text messages. To add to the layer of the mystery, 14 hours before the police went to the Benoit home to find them, someone went on Wikipedia and reported the death. That's odd. We're odd. See what I'm saying? Someone went on Wikipedia 14 hours before the police Got went there. to the home and said that the, he, there was the death. How do you explain that? Someone said, it was. oh, someone did it as a joke. To do that as a joke? Especially right before it happened. I could see maybe a couple of weeks, months, but 14 hours. That's a, I see a lot of these details I didn't even know about. So now I'm, We do our research. Yeah. Now my, my mind is changing because right. of how I thought of it. Now, as I look at these details, it kind of looks like there was an outside you know, movement in this that could have affected it. Well, either that or when things happen with most, not saying that it did with the WWE or any other company, because I don't know. But I do know this, protecting the reputation and keeping the sponsors are more important than anything. Than when any Bruce, human being. Right. When Bruce and Broder got stabbed in the dressing room, the police were told me that everybody in the dressing room told him that a wrestling fan stabbed Broder. They did not want the word to get out. We were still in that kayfabe world right. where we, what happened in the wrestling business stays in the wrestling business. The same thing happened with the Jimmy Slooker thing. It was slept under the rug for years until Slooker made a fatal mistake of doing a book and forgot what he told the police. And the story he put in the book was different than what the court paper. And that, that, that's how he, otherwise people would have never known that there was that that uh, that that there was not what they hear, and I think with the same thing that Chris Benoit, I think there was lawyers and stuff calling, and and and, and stuff to wash it away, to get rid of it as quick. And the what better way of doing it? And once you say suicide, it's forgotten about. Well, Tony, I got to put this one out to you. You want to talk potential conspiracy theories on the Sunday morning of the pay per view? He sent out those text messages between 3.51 and 3.58 a.m. saying that his dogs were locked in the pool and the side door was unlocked to Guerrero, Scott Armstrong, and these three unknown people. So if apparently if Benoit did do himself in or there was more than meets the eye to that story, I'm going to guess it happened early on Sunday morning, the day of that pay-per-view, after 3.58 a.m. That was yeah. the last known communication he had made. Or maybe he didn't say the text. Maybe the killer sent him. Do you think someone else sent You'll the text never messages? You'll know. Nobody so, so know. So if that is the case, someone would have had to have been in the house for several days. Could be several days. Yeah. If you believe the you timeline. Know, you know who most of the guys thought it was? Well, that I used to hear a lot of, which I know he didn't, 
a lot of people thought Kevin Sullivan that did. That was so ridiculous. That's a not so among the run. Not among the wrestlers, was it? Because, because with them matches, half of them were shoots. They didn't really like each other. He took his woman. He took his job. He took his book away. He took everything for Kevin. Kevin was the booker. Then Barack had the booker. Kevin had woman first. Then Barack got woman. He took everything from Kevin. Right, let's, so that's why a lot yeah. of the wrestling, when it happened, the first, not me, because I, I don't know the situation, but all every, every night in the dressing room, everywhere I went, all the guys would say, I bet you Sullivan is if I, now I know Kevin is not, but that was the first thing that hit our head because of the past history. Like if I got a problem with you and something happened to you, the first person they go look at it, who did I have trouble with? That's what most investigators do. But is, they never really investigated what I'm trying to say. Not to bring it up, I'm not saying he's guilty, I'm not saying he's innocent. That's why the OJ thing went, the, went lousy, right. and they didn't get a conviction, because when you look at the timeline between the murders and the timeline between, they rushed it, Johnny Cochran rushed it to court. That's why there was more evidence presented yeah. at the civil trial than they did at the criminal trial. Once, once the criminal trial started, if you discover new evidence, from what I've seen, they can't introduce it. You know, when, once you go to that table, you got to play with the, with the hand you got. Right. You can't get a new hand. So, so Mars Clark had to go with the hand she got because the policeman did not take the time. O.J. should have been arrested maybe six months to a year after the murder. They should give them time to really look at it, cross the dot every I, cross every T. But not, a, what, a couple of weeks later, he's in the, the damn thing on TV, he's in court. Couple, yeah, I mean, for the it was people, rush. maybe younger fans, like a buddy here maybe that didn't live through the experience, those that don't know, Kevin Sullivan, you, I'm sure you know who Kevin Sullivan the wrestler is. No. You don't even know who Kevin Sullivan the wrestler is? Oh, you're the is? one of the baddest dude that walked the face of the earth, brother. I top if tier, I saw a picture, I might probably. know. Off the top My top best people. friend, too. I love Kevin. Which I know, he, that's why I say he was not involved, but well, that was the I first thing that we saw. Was people. that his ring name? Yes. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. He yeah. was okay. top tier wrestler, one of the great brawlers of his generation. Yeah. Great mind for the business during yeah. the Nitro era. He That's was right. one of the bookers for WCW. That's right. Mm -hmm. He booked a feud where his wife, Nancy Sullivan, went, went with Chris Benoit. That's right. And as you see a lot of time in professional wrestling, the storyline became reality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Nancy Sullivan went off with Chris Benoit in real life and became yeah. Nancy Benoit. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin booked a hell of a feud between him and Chris Benoit based on it. He tried to, storyline-wise, put his wife with Benoit and it turned into a real life thing. Real life thing, that's uh, right. And Benoit detested Kevin because he felt Kevin buried him as the booker right. as time went on. And if you go that's back right. in history to, it was January of 2000, uh, Kevin, I'm, not, I'm sorry, Chris Benoit, uh, Eddie Guerrero, Perry Saturn, Dean Malenko, and two guys that didn't leave, Conan and uh, Shane Douglas, all went to WCW management saying they were going to quit and go to WWF mm -hmm. if Kevin Sullivan wasn't removed from that position. That's right. WCW tried to accommodate Benoit. They put the world title on him at the, whatever that January 2000 pay-per-view was. He beat mm -hmm. Sid mm -hmm. uh, Vicious for the title. That's right. And then still the next day, he showed up with the belt and gave it back. Mm -hmm. Benoit, Guerrero, Perry, and uh, who's the fourth one? Blanco, Saturn, Eddie, and Benoit. They all went to WWF and they became the group, anyway, the right. Radicals. Yeah. I remember that right. vividly. So there was a lot of bad blood, obviously, between Benoit and Kevin Sullivan to let the, the champion just give them the belt and go to WWF the next day, uh, to say the least. So there's a little background there. There was a conspiracy at one point that Kevin may have been involved in this murder as some kind of a revenge. But it Also, was, that might be a little too obvious as well, you know what I mean? It was, I, I don't know how it the was. The facts don't add up. The fact that Kevin yeah. was in Florida and they lived in Fayetteville, Georgia. Yeah. And I tell you, out of our friends that live in Fayetteville, Georgia, we have a few of them, would you have ever thought that, Kevin, uh, that Chris Benoit would be the one that would murder someone? No. And we know some friends well, in Fayetteville. You, know, you got Cheek, yeah. you got Orndorff mm. who can... And I, I, and I have all the respect and I consider both of them friends, but they both could have explosive personalities. Right. I never saw that in Benoit. Well, you know, Granted, there was a lot of controversy with the wrestlers mm -hmm. about uh, 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 Bret Hart. Yeah, our, our, our brother Orn Hart, right? Because he was he hadn't done that gimmick in years, right? And all of a sudden, just out of nowhere, and this is right after he had a big feud out with Brett, and Brett and Larry Bible telling Orn to leave, Orn would leave. All of a sudden, this idea came up with the cable. So a lot of people leave even with that thing because we've been in the, we've been in the business where 
we see things happen, but the promoter would tell us, you don't involve the marks. Mm -hmm. You don't involve the policemen. This is wrestling business. Wrestling was kind of like the mob, pretty much, you know, for, for many years. You know, they had a closed society. Mm -hmm. Even now, the guys now uh, uh, with Vince, the first thing you do when you have a meeting, you have to check your cell phones at the door on every meeting. Vince want to make sure that nothing get out of that oh, really? room. Every Even right really? now, they, every, every time we have a meeting, they, they, uh, Howard Finkerter or someone with, or agent would stand at the door with a basket and you drop your cell phone in this basket. You cannot take the cell phone in no meeting with Vince. Because what Vince I think really, that's a good idea, honestly. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy because yeah. stuff still gets out. And it still gets yeah, out, it still right? Gets but at least out. it's not recorded yeah, yeah, in but his if voice. He found yeah. Out, yeah, but once he found out, you're, you're the done. Door. Look at what happened with Steve Lombardi. Yeah, you have to you're be in done. there for so long. You, you're but done. back to the situation at hand, Tony. News was starting to break throughout the broadcast on real-life news that this was not some sort of, you know, there were... I remember, as I was learning as the day went on, it said maybe there was a gas leak and they all had died. But it started to come out that there was some sort of violent occurrence that took place in that home. Do you think, Tony, that with these mysterious text messages that took place early Sunday morning at 3.51 a.m., that by the time Raw began on Monday night, that some movers and shakers in WWF, no, WWE at that point, knew what had really happened? I don't think they knew. No, you don't think WWE no, officials no, knew no, at that because, point because because there was a murder that took no, place? No, 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 because see, she, she, she Vince is thinking of more than about the show. He, you know, a wrestler is the last thing on, on McMahon, uh, man. Well, they, no, once they, they didn't have wrestling that night. It turned into a three-hour Chris Benoit tribute. They took footage from the DVD that they had previously made yeah. of him, and all you saw on that Raw episode was Vince standing in the ring saying, yeah. my murder the week before on this show was part of the storyline. And what happened with Chris Benoit was real. It was a very eerie, eerie. I mean, yeah, an but empty the part, the part, you know, that this kid did this read about. Yeah. Somebody reported the murder before the police got there. Yeah. Fourteen how hours. How you know? Fourteen. How in the hell? Who who did that? It, well, all is known is that they from those two phones, from Benoit's phone and Nancy's phone, five text messages were sent early, early Sunday morning, one of mm -hmm. which went to Chavo Guerrero, mm -hmm. one went to Scott Armstrong, mm -hmm. and three are unknown. See? So who got the other three text messages? Or, or, what was or, or, or who sent it 14 hours before the police? No one knows. See? Most of the report get the, the, the police got to go and investigate to call it murder. How somebody knows somebody been murdered unless they was there when it happened? It was uh, one of it the. It ain't even on the news the yet. The whole weekend, Tony, I tell you, yeah. it was so odd. Yeah. If it was for me personally, it was great. It was the first time I ever worked with TNA. They had four shots up here in New England. Uh, we were with them every night, and I remember the night of the pay per view. They had a house show in Hampton Beach, New Hampshire, and I early in the day I took Linda Morati and the two mm -hmm. kids up, and we had a great time. Then I went and helped with the show. We taped some promos and whatnot, and I remember it was the Dudleys were talking about what was going on. That's, and you know how, mm -hmm. when you were with WWE, that right. is your life, that Benoit would miss a pay-per-view over his child yeah. being ill. Yeah. It, it was just strange to the boys. And not DNA. call from the house builder. Right, right, right. So, if the kid was ill, wouldn't you think he would take him to the house builder? I never imagined, though, 24 hours later, what that situation would become. I had met mm -hmm. Benoit a few times when I did work with Ed Cohen in WWE, mm -hmm. but Nancy we had known through Kevin. Mm -hmm. You know how tight Kevin was with Tony Rumble. I remember during ECW's mm -hmm. first run up here back in 1995, we went. We were at the hotel with them over at the Holiday Inn. I uh, sat on the same bed with yeah. her. I was eating pizza, and the I other boys were doing was other things. Holding but... a gun to you and tell them to do this. Really? Yeah. Yeah. But people could force you to sing a text. I mean, unless they lift fingerprints off the phone. If, they, if the police check the phone for fingerprint, yeah. maybe if they find another fingerprint on the phone other than that of, 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 uh, of, 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 of Benoit, you know, but like I said, there was no investigation, just like the Jimmy Slook answer, there was no investigation. You see, because companies, like I said, I didn't say they did it, but what company do, the first thought that hit every company, I was there when the kid got his neck broke, uh, when uh, uh, Shawn Michaels and Marty Gennetti. Oh, the jobber. Yeah, they, but it broke in a pay per view. In a pay per view. No, it was, it was, a, it was an undercard at a TV tape. Right, it was a TV tape. I was December there. December of 90. I was there. The only thing I hear, I'm not going to say who said it, 
This is what I hear. Get him the F out of this ring. He's holding up the show. Really? Now, I'm sure you're not familiar with that. In December 1990, it was either a Superstars mm -hmm. or a Challenge TV taping. Mm -hmm. Back when, you know, they were pretty much all prelim matches. It would mm -hmm. be the Superstar against the Jobber. The guys would go over in three or four minutes. Right. They used the Rocker Dropper. I can't remember the guy's name. Yeah. I think it was Chad. Yeah. Chad Austin, maybe? He broke his neck. Yeah. They broke his neck with yeah. the Rocker Dropper, and that's apparently right. Tony said Tom, after the match, right. they said, get the party out of the get ring. Get him the hell out of the ring. He's, He's all... holding up the show. And, he and they up... did the same thing with, with Owen Hart. Yeah. Get well, they were trying, at least the trying to get him to the hospital. Yeah, but it, it, no, they were trying to get him out of the freaking ring. That's all they were saying. But they could care less well, about, I don't the, know about that. I, I do. I, I, you weren't there. Don't have to be. I've been there so many years. I know the mentality. A, a leper don't change his spot. That show comes first, no matter what happened. When, when Lou Thaz got died, same thing. When Brody got stabbed to death, the show went on, brother. They ain't going to cancel no show just because somebody died. They're they, they trying to sweep that thing under the rug at fast before anything leaked back to them. That's all they think about. How can we protect the company? How can you not drag the company? Because when I got back to the dressing room with the Brody, I remember the police say, everybody, he said everybody, not this person or a few people, he said everybody said that a wrestling fan did it. So what happened was, in my belief, they, they, they had a meeting. And they was told that if, if to keep this between Cover the boys. Yeah. I mean, I've been in this business ever since 74. I know exactly how, when I broke my hand, they did not want, when I broke my neck, they didn't want people to know that I broke my neck in a car accident. I didn't know you broke your neck. What yeah, was this? Yeah, Tommy Rich took a wreck, wrecked the car. Uh, we were going from, uh, we was at Jordan Champion, right? he turned the car over, and uh, I ended up with a broken neck. So Ole Anderson went and got me out the house for it, uh, uh, two days later to do TV. He had Buzz Sawyer, who was stoned as hell. He's supposed to gimmick the board, like oh. sew it halfway, and then put stuff over he top. He was probably so he don't high see the as a kite. He was high as a kite. <laughs> he forgot to saw the board so it could break. He in there beat me in the freaking head with a two-by-four, and I got a broken neck. I had a, a, a halo on to hold my neck, and what they did, they had me to go up against the ring like, like I was on the April like, 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 like this, waiting for my opponent, right back to him. And he slid in the ring real fast, hit me in the super four, so they could take me back to the hospital, so they could say I broke my neck. In a wrestling neck. In a wrestler. Yeah. But it didn't work because I was already in the newspaper. So they said, oh, forget about it. So they drug me out the hospital, hit for me nothing. in the freaking head with a freaking two by four for nothing. For nothing. Because the newspaper, they already printed a newspaper that Professor Rasser, Tony Atlas, suffered an injury, and he's now at the, in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Yeah, slucked me out the freaking hospital to just things, do that. Things angle. always get so out. So he said, oh, we're going to make a lot of older Even in the 70s. Yeah, yeah. Ole Anderson did that. Ole Anderson did that. So I have seen him protect the business. Well, look at the slucker thing, perfect example. Well, we've covered Jimmy. but I, I mean, I mean I they covered that up for how many years? Billy Jack Haynes had a very unique uh, conspiracy theory when it came to this. He was around Florida Championship Wrestling, where you worked down there mm -hmm. at different times. Mm -hmm. He said to try and get a job in her younger years, Nancy Sullivan offered fellatio to Vince McMahon and Hulk Hogan in a limousine, mm -hmm. and that he thought that Vince McMahon was Daniel Benoit's father. Did you ever hear that one? I hear that, yeah. Do you think there could be any validity to it? You I never think know. he looked an awful lot like Chris. You never know. It, 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 I could have kids running right here I don't know about. Well, we know about you in the same. You know, the good uh, thing yeah. is with the shoe fetish, yeah, but, Maybe but, less of an off chance. Yeah, but with, with, with what yeah, went on, you can't impregnate it. In show. my book, in my book, too much. <laughs> in my book, too much, too soon. I got a chapter that say, "If the walls could talk." Well, these are the walls. Baby. I've we seen wrestlers. Now. I've seen wrestlers go with wrestlers' wives. I have seen. I I've seen women that pull trains. I have seen it all. Sexuality. I have seen guys that been on a trip in Europe, like Japan, that couldn't get laid try to crawl in bed with other guys. I've seen that too. I have seen, I have seen it all. It's an interesting business. Well, it was, it was, never a, come back. it was a world, <laughs> I love this, it, I, it as I said before, I'm a sponge. Separated, we didn't know anybody outside of the wrestling It was business. normal to us because we were in the right. wrestling bubble. But you we, much more than I. But. Yeah, but I know more people outside of the wrestling business at my career. In it. during my career, I knew nobody that was not a wrestler. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, were, we, were, we wasn't around nobody yeah. else. We was around each other. It was like a family. I mean, when I was with Captain Rabana, I saw Captain every day. 
We stayed in the same hotel. We, we, you know, we traveled the same town. The way a wrestler life starts, you, you go to a town, you check into a hotel, you go do the show, you come back to the hotel, or go to a bar, have something to eat, get something to drink. You get up the next morning, you go to the next town. So you, we knew nobody outside nobody. of the wrestling world. And anybody that was not a wrestler, we would call, he's a Mark, K. Fay. So we didn't even want to try to develop a relationship right. with anybody. It was a closed society. Up at the, and and I think that was better for the business. Yes. Yes. But what, what ended up happening, Vince had to change it because a lot of guys were having a marital problem because... What are those? <laughs> oh, yeah, because, I mean, you, I mean, you, you could leave your house and your wife could wait three months for she to see you again. It that was, was not, schedule, it was not yeah. impossible. You know, a lot of guys, they, they, they missed it. That's why me and Hacksaw got, that, got in that big beef on, on Legend House. Yeah. yeah. Because Hacksaw, deep down inside, feel guilty for the time he was not there for his child. And a lot of guys, I feel guilty because my daughter grew up without me, you know. And we wasn't even divorced, but she was... My daughter, I remember the first night I noticed it, I did something in Japan for a month, and I came back. And I, my, my, my wife saw me coming, and she told my, my, my little girl, my daughter at that time, Nikki, she was probably about three or four, your daddy's home. So she was looking, and it, when, I, when I came to the door, she started crying and ran away. It took me all day to get her to come near me. She you didn't know a who stranger. That, I was a stranger to my own daughter. Now, how many kids do you have? One or one. two? So you've said before on this show you yeah, have two. Yeah, but they're my, my Monica kids. So when I marry her, so that's your stepchild. Right. I got. But you. I never I call you. them stepchildren. I call them. Well, hey, look at my kids. situation yeah, yeah, yeah. with the two little Maratis. Yeah, yeah. Um, how often do you speak to your daughter now? Oh, we, we speak regularly. You have a good relationship with her. Very good relationship. Good. I'm with happy her. to yeah, hear yeah. that, just because of but us it, as friends. But it broke apart from age 14 up until about age 30. Really? It was it was horrible. Cause now she she started thinking about her childhood, and she did when she go places, and she see that when she take her kids to school for mm -hmm. faith, and she they have fought. And she remember when she was a kid yeah. that she was always the kid that she showed up a without a dad, and we was living in the same house. Yeah, isn't that strange? Living in the same house, and she never saw me. She saw me about once every ten days. I was like a stranger to her all the time. Where were you living at that point? I lived in uh, Atlanta for a while. So this is from, the Georgia, yeah, Georgia yes, for okay. a while, yeah. In Georgia for a while. I lived in uh, um, North Carolina for a while. I lived in Florida a little bit. with them. But no matter where I moved them to, they was always there by themselves. By the right. time I got home, it was 2 o'clock in the morning. Right. So the you baby lost was even sleep. that day. So she would see me when I get up that morning, and then I hit the road. Like, like in Charlotte, she saw me Sunday or Saturday night. Uh, I mean, Saturday, if you saw me Saturday night, you saw me uh, a, a Sunday and Saturday, a, a morning and night, not during the day. Then Monday, she saw me that morning. But then the next, that Monday night, I would leave and go to Raleigh, North Carolina to do the TV. Mm -hmm. And we stayed in Raleigh two days. Then from Raleigh, we went to Norfolk on Thursday. Then on Friday, we went to Richmond. Then we was in Roanoke or, or somewhere. Saturday, then Sunday we do Greensboro, and then out to Greensboro, I go home Sunday night. So my wife only saw me Sunday night, then she saw me uh, 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 Monday morning, and then I'm going again. Wow. And this was so to maintain relationships. It's almost near impossible to right. maintain now, relationships. Now, Rufus R. Jones, his family was in Kansas City, Missouri. So we didn't see him at all. Not at all. He used to fly him up during the, uh, over the summer break. They would come up and stay with him at his apartment during the summer break. Yeah. So his kid only saw him during the summer. Right. They went nine months without seeing their father. And this went on. Ruth was there for four or five years. Yeah. And so by the time, tough. yeah. That's yeah. why today sometimes they complain about how difficult the schedule is. Oh, it's easy it's four now. days on, oh, three they get days off. The, most of the time. Well, they get to the see their, they get to see their family. They get to see yeah. their family every week. Yeah. In my day, you can go. Yeah, you ask Rick Flair. He, he talks about it. Rick, yeah. Rick Flair sometimes. With who would be women, you know, he could go two or three months without seeing his family. It's a, it was a tough, tough industry. Yeah. At least now it's you a little Charlotte, bit more. If somebody ever interviewed Charlotte, how often did she see Rick? Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, she would tell you. She didn't she he see more. I think in yeah. his 30 for 30, he went in depth on how much he saw his family yeah. for ESPN. Yeah. That was a good 30 for 30. But That was excellent. Yeah, yeah it gave a lot of detail in his life, and that's the first time that I mm -hmm. realized that 
a lot of these wrestlers didn't see their family. No. And it no. was very shocking to me. Because it's year round. It's year, yeah. It's year round. You see, with football players, they may be busy for six months, but then they got six months with their family. Oh, yeah. Six months with their yeah. family. You see? You'd have to wrestlers be injured. don't have that luck. You'd have to be injured to have some family time. And even when you were injured, you wouldn't you sometimes come back to the arena? Not in my day. Well? Not in your day, because I know when day. people are injured now, they do travel. They can come depending up with, on the they can severity come up with of the injury. You have to be there. Yes. Yeah. You have to depending be there. on the yeah. severity of the injury. Well, I see a lot of football players, when they're injured, they're on the sideline, they dress up, they still yes. got to travel. Yeah, you still got to travel. So injury don't stop it all the time. You have to have a serious injury, well, like a stroke or a heart attack. <laughs> you got to try and reel, reel it back. I know the fans, they love listening to us talk, but I got to try and reel it back in to the focus of the episode. Uh, Georgia, the state, had a a George Zahorian of their own down there, Dr. Phil Aston, who was supplying Benoit with ridiculous amounts of painkillers, steroids, um, and I'm sure he wasn't the only one. There were many mm -hmm. other wrestlers that were uh, found once they yeah. raided his office. Do you think maybe that between all these pills that he was taking, all these steroids, um, Bob Hawley in his book wrote that he didn't think it had anything to do with pills. He thought it was alcohol abuse. Apparently, him and Nancy were having marital problems at the time, as, as Benoit apparently had a, a quote-unquote road wife. That was an era where there really weren't as many ring rats around because you weren't in the cities to maintain those relationships. Mm -hmm. so that ain't true. So what, what's that? So you're right about that. That ain't true. So the women, so basically you had all these divas on the road. They kind of became the, the traveling rats with them. Not when Junior took over. That's all done senior. What you say is hold true for senior year. When Junior I, came along, most of that cut out, a lot of that cut out of, 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 of with Junior. You didn't have no time. And, 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 and Vince put wrestlers up in hotels, whereas uh, the rats didn't know about. Well, I'm talking he about in 2007 with the elimination of rats virtually, the guys had the, the female wrestlers on the road to, you know, maintain uh, yeah, but, but, physical but, relationships with right. an Victoria was named as his quote-unquote road wife for a period of time that he was with, and Nancy apparently found out about it. No. You don't believe that no. to be true? No. All right, well, no. Chris Nowinski, I'm sure you know who he is now. He's doing some phenomenal work mm. when it comes to the world of concussions in every sport. He, when they looked at Benoit's brain from all the damage he'd taken from unprotected chair shots, that flying headbutt he'd do off the top rope, his brain looked like a man that was 85 years old with advanced Alzheimer's. So between, if you're looking about booze, pills, steroids, severe brain damage from his work in the ring, if he was the man that actually killed Nancy, Daniel, and himself, that's quite a cocktail going into his body. That's part of the details I heard about his brain, kind of like that roid rage. Yeah. Um, I mean, I could see anyone. It. When I was injured, I had post-traumatic stress syndrome for a while and um, post-concussion syndrome. I remember one time I went to the refrigerator, I took out juice, and I started to pour it. I didn't even take out a cup. It would make you do crazy things, make you think crazy things, and, but this to me isn't a quick instantaneous attack. He didn't say, here's a knife, Nancy, Daniel, me, it's done. This took place over three days. See? That's not right. Don't make rage. sense. You, and you've used Don't steroids. Don't make sense. You, have you ever experienced roid rage? No, no such thing. You don't believe roid rage exists, really? No. Why is that? It don't. It doesn't? No, no, sir. The steroids wouldn't have fit. What about steroids, drugs, alcohol, and an angry wife at home? No, it got to be in that person in the way. It has to be in the people, person to do it. People, I, okay. see, all that stuff with the steroids, the drugs, and all that. Like, I watch TV sometimes, not to get into it. Yeah, but you will. Let, let's say <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm black. Yeah. Let's say just for the sake of it. You uh, from Iraq, yeah. All right. okay? All right. Just for the She's sake dead. of it, just for the sake of it, you Caucasian. All right, I am. Uh, just for, just the, for the, the sake, sake, of, anyay. sake of argument, I'll okay. be Caucasian. We both, we both destroy this pen. All three of us destroy this pen, okay? When I destroy this pen, I'm a chronoma and I'm a thud I just, for destroying this pen. I'm a chronoma. He destroyed the pen, he's a terrorist. You destroyed the pen, you're mentally ill. I've heard that argument before as well. No, it's on TV, there's no argument. <laughs> yeah. you watch the damn, the, that no, I'm TV. saying like on TV I meant, like they, I've they seen do that. a lot of the arguments. 
So yeah. do you think you're trying to say so that Benoit would be looked at differently if he was so black? Far, everybody that Iraq. white commit a crime Iraq? is mentally ill. I asked my, I, I asked when I worked with Opportunity Enterprise. I said, don't they have some mentally ill black people too? See that like every murder, yeah, every shooting, they say he's what if he's Caucasian, mentally ill. If he's from, or he had if, something wrong, home right. problems. Yeah. If he's Arabic, terrorist. He's a terrorist. If he's black, he's a criminal. Thought and you commit the, commit the, the same, same crime. crime, but you get labeled differently. Yeah. So the suicide thing is something that came up with the lawyers. You know, you get a bunch of lawyers together, and once they put in your head that this guy commits suicide, the police and everybody stop worrying about it. It's yeah. over. It's once you can society. convince the people that it's a suicide, it is over. Mm -hmm. you, no more investigation, no more looking into this, no more looking at that. Because you know, he just got in all that trouble with the, with the stairwell with old Hogan there. Yeah. So the last thing that Vince wanted to do, the, the, you, you could hire Was people. Was he have one of his top guys popped with, you know, years worth of steroids yeah, in his yeah, basement? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? So so, so the, I, I know the first thought of any businessman, not saying that Was Vince did to get rid it. of the steroids. Get, well, no, get rid of the story. Bury it. Okay, fair enough. Bury it. But I'm talking about the instantaneous reaction in wrestling lore would be, okay, if a, who cares about Benoit? Who cares about the wife and the kid? Yeah. Let's get rid of the drugs and the steroids to protect right. the business. See, Raw Ray started with this. A lot of guys were doing the steroid, mm -hmm. but they also were snorting the cocaine and doing other stuff. Right. So with the cocaine, that made them kill it. But it's, it's easier for the company to say that it was over the steroid than over cocaine. Steroids is legal, cocaine is not. Steroids is more acceptable for, for, for use than the use of cocaine. So which one going to hurt the company more, going to be the use of the steroid, raw rage, or the use of cocaine? So they would pick the less of two evil to protect the company. we got to realize, whenever you work for a big organization, the first thing that organization comes to man in any organization is how we're going to keep our company out of it. How are we going to protect this corporation? Right. Just like the Cafinon thing, the kneeling at the flag. He's the yeah. one that started it. So they figured to get rid of it, get rid of Cafinon. And it would go Colin away with him. Colin Kaepernick, you're talking Kaepernick, about. Kaepernick, yeah. San Francisco 49 Yeah, 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 yeah get rid of him, and it would disappear. And what they did. He's, he's vanished. They That's got rid of him. probably be in the yeah, XFL. Because, <laughs> because, right. Well, because... It, it did. It never stayed with him. Like when Vince gave me my ring, he told all of us Hall of Famer. He said, "Even though you're not employed here in the company no more, as long as you wear that ring, you representing this company. Anything you do outside of this company, going to reflect on us." Like if Liz, I, do you have your ring on now? No. What? <laughs> Where is it? He doesn't want it to reflect right now. Yeah, yeah. But no, the, what, so what now it you, is, you can tell the good story. This is how the headline. This is how the headline going to read. Right. This is the headline. All right. W W E rested Hall of Famer Tony Atlas. Right. And then they're gonna start talking about the WWE. The only part of that whole paragraph that's gonna have my about me gonna be WWE. No, just no. the Tony Atlas part. And then once they mention who I am, now now with with the caffeine on there. It's, like, it's about what him, you've right? done in the past. But then, but, then the, but then nobody was talking about him no matter how I remember his name. The conversation went to who? The MFL. Right, right. It wasn't about him no more. Right. It was about the MFL. So, so that's why they had to get rid of him because it felt... When a policeman have a, a, a shooting, it ain't about that policeman. It's about policemen. See what I'm saying? Not, not just that policeman. In fact, when a policeman shoots somebody, the one that did the shooting is the one nobody even know about. That's the one that's being mentioned the least. Yeah. They're talking about their department. And who they represent. And who they represent. They go out to the company because they got the deepest pockets. You mm -hmm. got to realize behind everything is a thing called a dollar bill. Mm -hmm. People want, when they see something happen to a large corporation, the first thing somebody say, hey, it's a payday here. You got, we used right. yeah. yeah. to yeah. call them ambulance chasers. Ambulance chasers. And they would wait to somebody that worked for a big, big company. Like right now, me and you, we could laugh and joke about my foot fetish right now. But let's say Vince bring me back, okay? Bring me back. Make me, a, you know, try to make me some money. I'm on TV again. Some girl going to call up and going to want to sue me that they felt she felt. Well, look at Kavanaugh. Yeah. You know, what, high school? Are you ripping me? This woman, why? Because he's going on the Supreme Court. 
Look at Joe Biden. He's been touching people on the shoulder for how many years? Now he's running for president. All of a sudden, they line up. Mm -hmm. Look at this woman, a prostitute. Been selling her body to everybody. But she sold it to Trump. Now here she comes. If he had never ran for president, you would never hear about the story. No. But he's the president I now. I agree with you on that one. He's the president now. So he got the spotlight. Because before, if they did it, they dollar, wouldn't get a spotlight. It's a paycheck now. Yes. Some lawyer would come along. This woman ain't had no had no reason whatsoever to go out to Trump for nothing. Right. She got paid well. She got wear and down. He treated her like gold. You know, he treated her real good. He didn't abuse Better her. He didn't beat rat. her up. Yeah, he Better treated her like, rat. Yeah, oh man, he treated her like gold. Wear her down and gave her money, bought her thing, did everything for her just for you know a couple of minutes of pleasure. Little you know, palatial. right? Yeah. But <laughs> the lawyer, the lawyer come along and said, "Look, hey, don't cash that check. We can get." Million. We'll get more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll get another check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, you know, that that's nothing to him. He's worth billions. You get at least a, a couple of million. Oh, really? I can get more money than this thirty-five thousand dollars? Oh, that's peanuts. Oh man. And then he, the, the lawyer's the one that get all the money. Like for a while, they called me. They wanted me to do the concussion thing. The concussion. The lawsuit, concussion. Yeah. Thing. They had a guy that called John Lith or Jonathan on it. He quit wrestling in the fifties. Well, I don't know 60s. about that, but no, he was 60s. an old timer. My problem with the he concussion wasn't lawsuit, in the seventies. I believe that there is merit to all the guys that are on that list, most of them, with concussion issues. No. My point is, you look at someone like Matt Bourne, who was right in your chair in the studio, Doink the Clown, for those that don't remember him as Matt Bourne. He wrestled for about 30 years, mm -hmm. all together, probably two years in WWE. Right. How do you go after WWE when you cannot claim a particular, if you can say in a certain match, a certain incident that led to a concussion, sure. But if you're saying over the body of a career where you worked for, in Matt Bourne's case, 15, 20 different territory, how and do you, say, how do you blame a, WWE? The most time he spent most of the time was in Mid-South. Right. How do you blame WWE? I mean, if anybody could sue, it would be Bill Watts. <laughs> I don't think that's happening. Yeah, the because biggest got, wallet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because Bill Watts don't have no money. I think at some point WWE is going to have to pay. I think everybody involved is going to be disappointed because it's not going to be for the money the NFL players got. Nowhere near that. Probably not even in the NHL, just because most of those guys cannot pinpoint when these incidents took place. Oh, if they did at all. Well, I mean, you, how many concussions do you think you had over the years? You don't have to have no, no medical record. That's the problem. Right. The, there, many, there's no medical proof. Could you estimate how many concussions you had? I don't know. Lots. A lot of them. Yeah. yeah. But you can't pinpoint. Can you pinpoint no. one? No. And could you pinpoint one in WWE? No. Because some so, progress you know, over time as well. So for my good friends at WWE that may come across this, if Tony ever tries to sue you, he just said he can't pinpoint a match in WWE where it happened. Because you're an honest guy. Howard you're Fink honest. When they call me, I call Howard Finker. And what did Fink say? No, I didn't talk to Vince. I talked to Howard. I told Howard Fink that they... Say? With Howie, I didn't talk to Vince. I talked to Howard Finker. That's what I said, Howard. Right. Yeah. And, 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 then I, and then I told Howard that they would try to get me the thing. And Howard said, well, why are you going to send? I told him no. Howard was happy. Yeah, I told him no. Well, you were honest. Yeah, because I, 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 I couldn't see blame him uh, for, for something that may have happened, like you say, somewhere else. It could have happened in any see, of the territories yeah, you were in. That's right, in a territory, because more, all of us got went everywhere. Well, I, I took a lot of cheer shots. I, I hit buddy people. You know? I respect you an awful lot for that. Yeah. You didn't go for the easy money. But, Tony, let's try and tie it up together now. We went through some interesting uh, themes, different conspiracies that have gone on with the Benoit. There were even more than that. Uh, we kind of gave the timeline as it was on the, the Friday, apparently, when Nancy was killed, Saturday when he killed the poor little boy, mm -hmm. and then Saturday when he, according to police reports, hung himself in his uh, weight room, leaving Bibles all over the house and texting different wrestlers that the dogs, apparently he must have had violent dogs, I'm going to guess. He locked them in the pool area, and then he left the side door open for easy access to find him hanging in the weight room. Tony, from what you've learned about this situation, I don't know how well you might have known Chris Benoit. I'm sure you came across him a few times in your, your career, especially, I think, in WCW you might mm -hmm. have crossed paths very briefly in 93. What do you think? Do you think it's a bunch of bullshit, the theme that's been presented? Do you think it's valid that Benoit may have snapped? And did his family? And what, think, what, what's your thought? I know you're a very deep thinker. I, I I think he got involved with someone, and he didn't know who he was involved with. And I think that they put a hit on him. 
over a three-day period. They would try to get him to do something. He wouldn't. He wouldn't go for it. And they and they, and, and 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 they murdered his his family and had him to watch. You think it was so bad they actually mentally the tortured brother, Benoit, watching brother. him kill his wife, yeah. then kill his son, and no, then they no. killed him yeah. and they made him yeah. watch it. Watch, yeah. Really? Yeah. Now, what do you think could have been possibly going on that would have led to that? It, it, That's a you well, know usually like, when someone puts out a hit. What kind of like Dino Bravo? And that was oh, a yeah. quick boom, you know, boom, same, boom. same thing. You know, every time that these things happen, it had to be somebody the person know to have access because there's no signs of a break in, which means they let the person into the house. They trusted the person. Bruiser so Brody. So had to have been someone right, they knew. When I talked to Bruiser Brody, and he was sitting there, he was waiting for his ride. And I asked him, I said, Who are you waiting on? He said, Jose Gonzalez. That's the guy that stabbed him. He was waiting on him to get a ride. He rode with him all week. You see what I'm saying? A big bad John who nobody talks about. Because this happened back in the, in the 70s. Around 77, 75, somewhere along. He got shot in the shower. But he was involved with bikers and all these that, that people. You know, he was really part of that biking game. Yeah. And so, but they knew he always carried two guns on. And I knew he carried a gun, a gun with him. All the rest of you carried guns. I used to carry a 357 Magnum because we travel all the time. Right. They, they got him in a shower because they knew, they, whoever shot him knew he took his guns off before he went to the shower. They knew it was safe. Yeah, they, right. they, they knew it was safe. So these incidents are happening in wrestling all the time because sometimes, they're like, I'll butt it. Um, I was there when he almost got hit. Cool. Sheep. All right, right. Yeah, if it wasn't for Adrian O'Donnell, she would have been dead. Wow. You know, they had people to come there to, to, to get him, and Adrian, you know, Adrian knew the guy because Adrian was getting his shit from him, too. So they asked the guy, say, look, uh, you know, we hate to do this, but uh, we're going to have to do something with, you know, with, with, your, with, with, with the sheik here. He said, you know, he get bags from me every time I come here. He ain't paid for them. The guy pulled out his book and said, look, I got to collect this. Wow. See, I even got to go back. Do you remember how much it was? No, no, but I remember they asked me. I gave them 300 bucks. Wow. I gave them 300. You were a friend to Sheiky, baby. Well, I was making about four grand a week then, so 300. You, you could swing it a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and, were a friend. Yeah, and I see him do it for Sweet Hanson when he got in trouble with some Sheik pretty shady. Sheik helped out Sweet Hanson? Yeah. Well, when he got involved with some pretty shady people with the gambling. Him and Andrew Moscow. Sweet like, Hanson and Angelo Yeah, Moscow. yeah, they used to go yeah. to Vegas and do that, do this gambling and stuff. They just love to gamble. You know, the boys who play cars and yeah. stuff, they would, like Andre, they're all Playing into the gambling, yeah. all into gambling. So he, he ran up some gambling debts one time, and, you know, they came They wanted up, their they, money. They wanted their money, yeah, yeah. All right, well, and, folks. And, up. And, no, and Chris probably got involved with somebody about something, didn't come out right, and they, you know, and he probably told him, go, He's a big rugged guy. Sometimes we all that was big and rugged. We would tell people to go f themselves. Like when I was boxing uh, with the police athletic league back, I was probably about fourteen or fifteen years old, and they drove me all up to New York, and I'm gonna box in the in the gloves. Where they had this guy that they were prepping, mm -hmm. so they knocked on my door, and I, they all was in a room. That, you know, I was in a room with some other some other guy that came up on the bus. We took a bus all the way from Roanoke, Virginia, all the way along that drive. We were, they didn't fly us, you know. We right. just came sure, up on sure, the bus. Sure, yeah. So they said, hey, Keir, come on. We're a nice Italian. You like Italian food? Oh, yeah, I love Italian food. So I went with them. Not know no butter. They, there was no fancy hotel like, you know, they had the back of theirs. We, you know, got to knock on the door. I just go and get in the car. I don't know nobody. They take me out put me in a swamp. In a swamp? In a swamp. And what did you do in the swamp? I stood there. And they told me, they the said, swamp. they said, now, we don't want you to win. They said, when, certain, certain, when the second round comes, we want you to lay down. You're, otherwise, they said, you're going to make a home of this. This is going to be your new home. Now, I'm about, you know, 14, 15 year old. They were kid. trying to rig a. a a high school where they teenage were boxing? Well, they were the, they were the, uh, with the Golden Glove. See, you mm. win the Golden Glove, you turn pro. At that young of an age? Well, the Golden Glove is most of teenagers. Really? Just yeah. like the military, most of teenagers. People don't know that. Well, military, and 15, yeah, 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 boxing the same way. Yeah, really? you wouldn't take Tyson when he was twenty was world champion. Yeah, that's true. So that's you know, bo most boxers they start off at twelve, 
You know, nobody, so you think that you, nobody go nowhere. No, where, where I, where I had a lot of fights, and, 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 and I wasn't the type of guy. I, had, I got what you call a high tolerance to pain. Mm -hmm. Just like with people That's why hit, you like the abuse. It doesn't hurt. Well, I don't feel it. Yeah. With like, like, like if this kid should hit me now, I, I want flinch. Do you want to try it out? Go ahead. I, I, want, I get madder. <laughs> it triggers something in me. Going back to everything you saw as a kid. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think that's what it is. That's why we had David Reese here with yeah, us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because that what happened with me and Paul. He hit me, but I didn't know he hit me. Yeah. When, when someone hit me, I just... I just you go into a zone. Yeah, yeah, something like that. And, 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 and I don't feel nothing no more. I feel it the next day. <laughs> not when it happens. Not when it it's happens. It's the adrenaline. No. It's that a, starts pumping. No, it's not a dream. I, 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 I've been in a lot of fights. It's not, it, I know a lot of people got a dream. It's not a dream. Everybody blame everything on a dream. Some people got a low tolerance to pay. Some got a high tolerance to pay. See, most of us guys got a high tolerance to pay. When we was kids, we got the shit kicked out of us by our parents. So we got used to receiving punishment at a very young age. The only people that, that, that can't take pain is those that was raised without pain. If you raise with pain, it become part of you. Right. That's why I, I, he saw me when, when, when my back was out. Right. Didn't miss a show. You were in rough shape. But I you went. You made the towns. I went. You don't see that nowadays. Someone, no. someone gets a little sprained ankle well, there all, three it's, weeks. It's, it's how you they raise something. complain about something. it on Facebook and right. that's it. You could bring a kid and you slap him every day. A kid, by the time that kid get 20, you stop and you ain't doing nothing for that kid. That kid mm -hmm. ain't used to that. See, you change an individual environment, the individual will change himself. The brain controls the body, the body do not control the brain. So whatever you program that body to do, just like you, you play football, look at them guys get hit. Mm -hmm. But they can come back next Sunday. Because their body had developed a high tolerance to pain. When I first hit the rope, well, he knows. You, I take you into a wrestling ring right now and throw you into the rope. It's going to hurt like hell. Yeah, sure I've does. worked the ropes before. With it the, hurt with the Man first Sandy. time you hit them. It hurt like hell mm -hmm. because your body is not used to right. hitting that it rope. It does hurt, yes. The first time somebody picked you up for a slam and knocked all the wind I out of you. I saw stars the first time that right. happened to me. I remember hitting Gene Anderson one time, and Gene Anderson said, you, said, said, you FNC. You know. He called you the C word? Yeah. He said, why do you call you the, 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 the boys use that a lot in, in, in the... Uh, but why? Because that's how they address women in the 70s. So he addressed you as a woman? Yeah, because you right. act like right. one. Because I hit him, and he said, with them big arms, is that as hard as you can hit so You kids? hit him light. You were working light. No, okay. I wasn't working no. light. No. But to him you were. To him it was. Right. So I hit him with everything I had. He go, oh, yeah, that's good. Keep, keep it up. Because he was used to Johnny Valentine. Johnny didn't throw working punches. Right. Ask anybody what Greg. Greg don't work. Anybody tell you they work with Greg, they lie. <laughs> <laughs> when you're in the, in the ring with Greg Valentine. Those chops. Brother, it, it, it's off rip. With, with Vince, the guy, when I was there, guy was complaining about Ric Flair with them chops. They said, oh, brother, can you get Flair to lighten up on them chops? Wahoo McDaniel? Hit me so hard one night, I wet, I wet myself. But this was fun to these guys. Mm -hmm. You know, the some wild Samoan. You they wanted them, that it was a custom. They wanted the credibility. It was a custom among the Samoan people when, back in the 70s. Like I said, I don't know how it is now. Yeah. They cannot be friends until they fight. We were driving one night, me, Alpha, and Seeker. They, they gave me a ride. And all of a sudden, they pull over. And they, everybody started fighting. You and the Samoans? Yeah, yeah. You know, Two they, on one? No, they were hitting each other. They were all hitting each other. They, they, fought, they were doing it for fun. That was fun. And you fought with both of them? Well, I, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, hey, you know, nobody won. We were just punching each other. It was a draw. No, they, they wanted me to be their friend. Hmm. You can't be their friend. How in rough the did it get? Huh? How rough did it get? Like, was it? Oh, they hit your seeker, knock your dick in the dirt. Excuse me. <laughs> Sonny, you will not offend in this studio. Okay. But trying but, to but, tie but, but, that, right. but that was a mentality of people, and they had to build your tolerance to pain. Right. Mm -hmm. Because pain is a part of football. Pain is a part of wrestling. You over here, the guy that can't take a punt, they say he got a glass jaw. Mm -hmm. Which means he got a low tolerance to pain. Yeah. 
It, when, when you're in any type of fight, everybody could give it. But can you take it? Mm-hmm. When the last time you've been punched in the face? Think about it. Never. See my point? So the, the moment somebody punches your face, you know what your body going to do? It's going to go into shock for a few seconds. Because mm-hmm. it's your first time feeling something. And the body, the brain got to comprehend it. Mm-hmm. Do you think that Lanny went through that the first time he serviced? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you know how to end a conversation. Shock at first. You know how to end a conversation. You? <laughs> well, I hear the music playing in the background, Tony. I got to ask you one question before we go. Do you think we'll ever learn what truly happened that night? No. No. That, that got buried under the rug when it happened. Once they put that suicide label on it, it's done. People don't, they say, oh, he commits suicide. Boom, end of story. All right. Well, fans are all. It, oh. You see, there is no limitation, uh, limitation on murder, homicide. I mean, you could murder somebody 20 years ago, and, and that case is still active today. Look what happened with Jimmy. Oh, right. Yeah. But what with suicide, the moment the coroner says suicide, it is over for the police department. The investigation stop. People stop talking about it. They stop writing about it. It is over. Once you've proven, proven that point out there, and that's what, unfortunately, what it would have been with Brody. Like I say, if I kept my mouth shut, would nobody know the truth about Brody? If Snook had kept his mouth shut, Nobody would know they about it. They would have never been able to reopen. They would have never known. They would have never known. Never known. They would have whipped with the explanation they got. Very sad. It was certainly one of the low lights in the history of professional wrestling, but hopefully a lot can be learned from it. WWE really went out of their way to institute um, a more serious form of testing between that and Eddie Guerrero passing away a couple of years earlier. Hopefully someone like you that wasn't all that familiar with what happened that tragic weekend in Fayetteville, Georgia, learned a little bit. We got a lot of great content coming your way this summer. Don't forget, Tony Atlas is going to be back. Matt's going to be joining us for Wrestling Insider episodes. Demolition Axe and I have some great shows coming your way. Demolition Smash, uh, Barry Dasso is going to be with us. We've got live MWF wrestling coming your way. Blockbuster superstars. Announcement after announcement coming, Tony, as we approach our 18th year. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, you know, uh, I have a birthday coming up pretty soon. You have a birthday coming up pretty soon. Tony, your birthday is about 10 months away. Yep, pretty soon. So you better start shopping now. <laughs> no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have my 30th birthday. Your 30th? Yeah, I'll be 30 years old. For the 33rd time. <laughs> <laughs> no, geez, that's not funny. That, 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 that's not funny at all. That's that, all that, right. That's not funny. So for Tony Atlas, my uh, uh, new sidekick here, Matt, I'm Dan Marotti. Until we speak again, folks, you and yours, be well. I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm John Cena Sr. Let us tell you how the action and excitement of the Millennium Wrestling Federation can help raise cash for your nonprofit cause. Experience the action and excitement of the Millennium Wrestling Federation live in your city throughout New England, the tri-state area, down through the Carolinas, out to our friends in the Midwest and beyond. If your nonprofit organization is looking for an interactive turnkey experience, while putting the fun into fundraising, you've met the perfect tag team partner to work with every step of the way. The MWF offers a variety of packages for groups of almost any size, from our live events at the Boston Garden, the Kowloon Entertainment Dining Complex, and the legendary Suffolk Downs, to high school gyms and function halls. We've presented live events everywhere and anywhere. Since 2001, the MWF's mission has been simple. Keep the kids off the streets. Under the leadership of President David Reese, we bring the superstars of yesterday, today and tomorrow to your town. Not for a wrestling show, but an event that features action-packed in-ring wrestling, autograph, pose photo opportunities, Q&A sessions, and so much more. It's the best of sports and entertainment. The week of your event, we can add on to the endeavor with anti-bullying campaigns library meet and greet reads, youth sport concussion seminars, and more. Our live events are fit for fans of any age from 5 to 95. This fall is part of our new Kids Club program. We offer live event experiences exclusively for the youngest of fans. On the flip side, we can produce a tailor-made event for fans of an older demographic as well. We work with you every step of the way to get the word out to fans near and far on our local television offerings and to over 50,000 fans and growing on our social media platforms. Your success is our success. If your group has had enough of candy bar and wrapping paper sales and has the energy to team with our passionate fan base, bringing the NWF experience to your community, 
is the answer to put smiles on faces while raising cash for your cause. Contact us today to get the ball rolling for your custom-made event that you'll want to bring back year after year to your community. Don't just take it from us. Here are the folks we've teamed up with in the past. 